Okay, uh, welcome at our today's webinar for Primo Discovery for Patron uh, uh, Facing Librarians. I am Yvonne Maliksi, Customer Success Manager here at Progress X Libris. I trust that you are doing well, uh, whatever part of the world you are sitting right now, um, and enjoying these uh, our digital webinar moments, as I really appreciate your attendance here today, and very grateful to have this chance to deliver and share to you this webinar about introduction to Primo Discovery. So uh, this webinar is focused on helping uh, patron-facing librarians to have a deeper understanding of how the Primo Discovery Service works. So uh, basically, what's, uh, the first part of this webinar will uh, provide introduction at major points of how Primo works at your library, while the second part is focused on hands-on practice by doing live search demonstrations at Primo Discovery, where, of course, you can uh, follow along with me by using your uh, Primo Discovery from your institution. So we want this webinar to be uh, more uh, interactive as possible, so we're inviting everyone to participate uh, by posting your comments and your questions at the Q&A uh, chat, where we're going to be having uh, some time uh, at the end of uh, the, at, uh, near the end of the webinar to deal with the Q&A. Okay, so uh, let's get started with our section objective uh, for this webinar. At the end of this session, uh, you will be able to explain how Primo indexes and searches and ranks resources. You'll be able to conduct topical and known item searches and use space sets and advanced search to refine result sets. The Primo Discovery is a combination of discovery and delivery. Discovery is what allows researchers to find the resources across a broad variety of sources, which can be the library catalog, your subscription databases, the open access repositories, and more. The Primo interface provides a way to enter searches and retrieve and view uh, relevant results. Then discovery ends when the users find the citation or record for an item they are interested in, regardless of where it is located. And delivery is all about getting access to the resources and uh, that they have just discovered. When patrons use Primo to find uh, the resource, they are given an availability statement that guides them to where the physical resource resides and connects them to databases to retrieve the full text, or in case of item not owned locally, uh, directs them to uh, option for interlibrary loan and document delivery. Primo Discovery Interface allows patrons to search your library collections along with billions of citations indexed at the central discovery index to get a single relevance rank list of results. So uh, let's talk first about your, your library content. Of course, your library content is indexed, including the catalog records, your institutional repositories, and if you choose uh, two as well, your research guides can be available at the, uh, the index. Bibliographic data is harvested daily or in some cases weekly, while availability data is harvested in real time. So uh, the Primo interface also searches the Central Discovery Index, a meta index that contains over 4 billion records from over around 4,000 databases. Uh, this index uh, include citations, abstracts, and for most items, searchable full text, and includes over 90 different types of content, including books, articles, government documents, dissertation, thesis, reports, maps, and many other uh, content types like video recordings and archival materials. The CDI is continually updated with citation metadata, subject terms, abstracts, 
and food packs from content providers. So since uh, CDI includes billions of records, your library of Primo installation needs to know which of that content your library has access to. So during your implementation, you activate or you turn on the databases you have access to. And this activation uh, process will activate content, uh, which is what will going to appear in your Primo search by default. Uh, if, you, if you then add or cancel a database subscription, you will need to update this information in Primo and your link resolver so that Primo can correctly identify which content you have access to. CDI also uh, include uh, additional uh, uh, content from sp special providers content. So uh, it's also indexed, uh, augmented with special content, including peer review, scholarly status information, citation counts from Web of Science and scopers, and document object identifiers from Crossref. Now let's have uh, a look at what happened when we search in Primo. So when a patron submits a query to Primo, the search result includes only items that are in your full text collection based on availability. So the default search result, in, uh, default search result uh, includes your full text subscription content, indexing and abstracting citations, and your catalog records if you have enabled them. Uh, the default results will also include items from your institutional repositories and your library research guide. Patrons can then choose to expand their search beyond the library collection in case that, uh, that result will include provider's content to which you do not subscribe and shared content from other libraries such as other institutional repositories. It's basically uh, the second circle that we are looking here in our in the image in front of us. Then finally, there is a set of Primo data that uh, you might not see in your search result, including indexing and abstracting data, that is reserved for subscribers and private labor library data, for example, like the Web of Science uh, citations. So uh, off-campus patrons needs to, uh, to log in uh, in your proxy server uh, or else that data will be omitted from their search result. So uh, you can see here we have the property content which is uh, only accessible for authenticated users. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more about uh, Primo relevance ranking. So, uh, in Primo, search results in Primo are ranked so that most relevant records appear at the top of the result list, and less relevant records appear further down. So Primo's relevant ranking combines two types of factors. We have the dynamic and the static ranking. Dynamic ranking factors focus on the search terms entered by the researchers, and Primo considers how often the search term appear in the record. So the records with more matches are boost over those uh, with fewer matches. Then Primo looks at uh, which field uh, contains the terms. So record with the search term in the title, uh, in the order, on the abstract field, it will rank higher than the records with the terms only in, in the full text. Primo's uh, algorithm also processes stop words to take into account the importance they can play in the meaning of uh, the search. So Primo also uses synonym mapping and stemming, although uh, exact matches are boosted over uh, faster uh, matches. So yeah, you can see there in the dynamic ranking, the field weighting there is really important. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we also have the, the synonym and the stemming uh, going on in there. Then when it comes to the static ranking factors, it focuses on the attributes of uh, individual items. Content type is considered, for example, a record for a book will be ranked higher than a record for a book review. And then more recent items are boosted over older items. 
uh, the peer review and scholarly content is also given a boost in ranking. And even if you do not subscribe to Web of Science or Scopus, Primo uses this data to boost articles that are uh, that have higher citation counts, as those may be important, as there may be important works in those fields. Then uh, finally, Primo will uh, give your own uh, library content, uh, which is your catalog record, your institutional repositories, and research guide, also a boost in relevant uh, ranking. Uh, that is basically uh, the static ranking. And of course, uh, you know, in Primo, you can also customize this relevant ranking when it comes to your local content. We do have a uh, very flexible ability for Primo to customize the ranking. With, uh, with the Central Discovery Index, we released the EC Active single activation directly via the subscribed services like Alma and SFX. So the full text and search rights are managed in one place. Uh, where the full text settings uh, filtered by availability are under the full control of the library. And if you expand beyond the library collection, then you can see everything that is available to search in the index, expanding uh, library beyond the library collection. There are some exceptions, uh, as what we have mentioned in our previous slide. So uh, uh, for the proprietary content, uh, we mentioned before that, for example, like the, the Web of Science or the Scopus and the other relevant private data private uh, library data can only be, uh, can only surface for authenticated users. Okay, now uh, let's look at the match and merge at Primo in CDI. So uh, the Central Discovery Index content comes from uh, a variety of sources, including publishers, content aggregators, open access repositories, institutional repositories, library catalogs, and many, uh, many more content. So uh, in total, we ingest content uh, around over uh, 200 or uh, 2,000 data sources. And as we get content from a wide variety of sources, we, we may have more than one, uh, one record for a given citation. So uh, displaying all of this uh, separately can confuse our users and uh, make it harder for the user to find what they're looking for in the result. So the match merge process is part of the changes that happens in Central Discovery Index, which we're bringing to the Primo Discovery. With the match and merge process, we combine all records for a citation together with a single search result, while all at the same time pulling all uh, the possible metadata to drive discovery uh, for a better user experience. The new, the new combined record is called the logical record. The original records that contribute to the logical record are the physical record, which ultimately creates the rich uh, uh, data for the master record for both discovery and delivery. This might sound uh, complex to you. Uh, so. Uh, we do also have uh, a webinar in here when it comes to the match and merge process at the Central Discovery Index, where um, you can find also the recording for that webinar uh, at YouTube. So I suggest if you do have time to review that, which is really very interesting, which will provide you an overview of the match and merge in CDI. Uh, we now have in front of us a, an example of a search result with multiple access points, where we have uh, a book with multiple access uh, access in Primo Discovery. This book is available as both a physical item on the shelf, uh, as uh, also as an as an ebook uh, with uh, with link to uh, available online link. So you can see there. Uh, we have uh, the physical record where you can see it's bit, the availability and the call number and the electronic record, which is available online. Then uh, uh, we have an example here for a search result with links to full text, 
a premier record for uh, a journal article from multiple sources where, uh, where patrons can click on the available online link uh, to be taken to a list of all the online holdings for this article. The Primo Discovery uh, service is highly customizable and there are a huge uh, variety of possibilities to customize the Primo user interface based on the institution's needs. Uh, so if you, if you have familiarity with like CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and AngularJS, and of course, depending on your experience with, this, uh, with each of these languages and frameworks, you will be able to perform more complex customization at the Primo uh, interface. Here are just uh, a few of the examples where customization can apply at Primo Discovery Service and are uh, not limited to this, of course. So I just actually just place in here a few of them. For example, the user interface, the terminologies in there, images and icons, you know, uh, or, and in the discovery part, the, the search scopes, the search parameters, you actually can, uh, can do uh, uh, very nice uh, jobs in there. You can also, uh, as you can see, your relevancy, you can, you can customize the relevancy of your local collections and as well, record displays and uh, citations tracking. Okay, so uh, this basically is uh, the end of the, uh, the the first part. Now I'm going to be going to my demo uh, site. In, uh, the, the Primo interface uh, customization that you see here at my demo site might vary due to your local customization of the interface and of course the difference in holdings at your institution. So. Uh, I will be conducting a hands-on demonstration in here, and you can, of course, uh, you are, of course, welcome to follow along with me by using your uh, local, your, using your local Primo uh, installation. So since the Primo Basic Search Box is designed to be integrated with your library web page, it can look uh, very plain here at my demo site. Uh, However, once we conduct our initial search, we'll see the result page uh, looks uh, very similar to your installation. So uh, first of all, notice here at the top of the screen, we have some uh, menu links uh, where the library can create additional links uh, and that can appear here at the main menu. And at the far right-hand side, uh, we have additional uh, uh, features in here. Again, we have another menu where uh, we can uh, change the language interface if our, if our Primo installation supports, like if our institution have uh, many other languages, students who, who need different uh, language interface, we can then uh, change the language in there. And also down here you can see we have access to our favorite folder and the search history. At the same time, if your institution have a uh, link to the library card, you can access this from this menu. Notice that we have the icons here also being uh, provided for the, uh, for the favorites and the, the search history. At the same time, we can also uh, log in uh, at our institution, which I'm going to do now so I can have access to those proprietary content that we had mentioned a while ago. Okay, so before I really do something here at the search box, I want to first introduce the, uh, the voice uh, search assistant from Primo. You notice that we have a microphone in here. Primo support uh, voice search assistant. So Primo is listening while you are talking and you can actually uh, command Primo to search using the voice. At the same time, you can uh, you can see we can we have an option to select the language if our institution supports uh, different language options in here. And then, of course, if you want to, then you can use uh, the search assistance of Primo. But I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this training. You can see it's already catched 
uh, what uh, what I was saying in here, it's really very sensitive. So let me just go back to uh, reset my search result in there. Okay, so let's say, uh, Let's say we are helping our students uh, research topics uh, regarding uh, coronavirus. So I'm just already going to stay uh, at uh, the current topics we have. So I'm typing in here uh, coronavirus. Notice that uh, Primo is providing me different search profiles. So. Uh, uh, Primo is telling me you can search within your library uh, uh, university records or you can search within the blended uh, search scopes uh, from your library records together with the central index. Or you can, you can just select central discovery index uh, content if you want to target those, those uh, electronic resources. At the same time, we also have an option here to uh, select different uh, uh, formats, like for example, we have digital resources in the university. We also have, we can also search within the course research in here or the videos within uh, our network. Or why not? If we are part of a consortium or a network, then we can also select to search within our uh, university network. But for the purpose of this uh, session, I'm going to be using the blended results in there. Notice that the minute I, I, uh, the minute I click on the blended result, uh, it automatically uh, search, uh, uh, Primo automatically run the search without me clicking uh, the search icon. I noticed that my personalization settings here uh, is kept, so I'm going to remove that because I've been like uh, researching a while ago. And uh, Primo uh, basically have that really good way to memorize your personalized settings. So uh, Primo, the result is uh, sorted by relevance. Notice in here that we have uh, the drop down list and we can actually sort the result by date or uh, by title or by author. But I don't suggest doing that. You can do that if you really just searching for uh, uh, specific records for within a specific date. However, if you want to have uh, accurate relevance, just sort it by relevance and then uh, use your face sets later on uh, in order to, to sort uh, uh, with a different uh, face setting. Okay, so, uh, Primo retrieves hundreds of results. You have, we have, uh, you might have different results if you're following along with me. Notice that Primo ha has highlighted a search term so students can see where the search terms appear in the record. Uh, the result includes combination of different source types, uh, videos, we have articles, we have uh, book chapters in there. Uh, Notice that it's also highlighting records that I already had uh, kept at my favorite, so I'm just going to remove that so it's not going to uh, disturb us. So also note that the initial results do not include newspaper articles where uh, if we scroll further down, we have the option to use the specific search for the newspaper. Now let's have a quick look at any of our records in here. Let's say, for example, the book chapter here. We can see the title, the author, and we have the publication date in there. Uh, further to the right-hand side of every record, you can see we have a way to uh, copy the permalink. And if you go really far down at the corner, we also have the show action point in there where when we click, we have an option uh, to access the, uh, the, the, the different way that we can export into different formats this specific brief record. Notice here we have an option to export to Mendeley, to uh, BibSec, uh, BibTex, to RIS, uh, to ECBib, and also at the same time directly to RefWorks. 
In here, we also have our citation style manager. So uh, whatever uh, different type of citation style our institution has set up for us, we can then uh, in here select and change uh, the citation style of this uh, citation. And then from here, copy the citation to our clipboard or uh, at the same time, we can also email directly from within these action points of the brief record. Notice that uh, I have been using this icon in here to add items at my favorite. So the minute you click that pin, uh, it will be adding, rec add adding items at our favorite. So you can see it brings to my favorite folder there, which I'm going to access now. Going to my uh, favorite folder, I'm going to find all those records that I've been adding at my favorite. At the same time, I can also save the searches and see the search history here at my folder. Well, in here, I also have the action uh, that I can do, uh, that the same actions that I can apply within the brief result. And I can go back to my search uh, result by clicking uh, the search icon there at the top. As you may notice here at the top of our screen, we have, uh, we have the reference entry at the top with a basic overview of the coronavirus. This is particularly useful for uh, students who are still exploring their topic. And these reference entries are pulled from your uh, subscription encyclopedia. And at the same time, you can see you can, uh, we have an access to the full text in there. Okay, so uh, let's let's try a new search. Let's just try a new search uh, to explore for Primo. Let's say this time I'm going to reset this. Let's say this time uh, we're helping we're helping a student search uh, locate research on the effect of climate change on coffee production. So I'm going to type climate change in here. Again, I'll be using a blended search scope there. Notice that the search expansion uh, vocabulary at the top is taking place. So uh, we have our search results uh, being expanded uh, with words and phrases that contribute variations of the search term with the same meaning, or thereby increasing the accuracy of the user's searches. So uh, this service is similar to the expansion with synonyms feature, but this is more robust and the expansion are visible on the screen. And of course, uh, we can, uh, we are also provided the option here to, uh, to revert it back. So let's say uh, uh, Primo is saying, telling us your, your result include the climate changes. Do you want to just, uh, search for climate change on coffee. So we're just going to say, let's just search on, on climate change on coffee. And as I already added uh, some of the materials that my favorite, it's highlighting it the minute I move uh, my mouse. So I'm going to remove that from the favorite so it will not be disturbing us. The minute you click on the title uh, of the brief result, Primo will be opening the, uh, the full record display and will be bringing us to the service page, we call it. And so from within the service page, we're then going to find again all those action items that we can do within a record. We can send it uh, to uh, different formats. And the more we scroll down, we're going to find the uh, the, the view, uh, view online resources, the access to different providers for this uh, specific uh, e-resource. And down here below, we have the details of the record where you can find uh, the link to the creators and also at the same time, the subject terms in here and uh, the description of the title. 
notice uh, that uh, the creators and subjects are hyperlinked. So the minute we click on that, Primo will grab the specific term and then we'll put it in the advanced search and we're going to be, we can search uh, for a Primo record based at that specific element. The more we scroll down here, we'll, we'll, uh, we have the ability to see more information within the full record. We can actually add a tag here. At the same time, if the library is providing additional services uh, for the specific record, then we're going to find links here to the library services. In this case, uh, if we don't have access to the full text here, we can request this, uh, purchase request this to the library or request this via uh, another uh, service here that they call Get It Now. Notice also that here we have we can view the citation from Scopus and the Web of Science because we are an authenticated user. So uh, that's why we can access this uh, specific content in here. At the same time, we have the citation tracking here uh, where I'm going to uh, talk about it later on going back to the brief result. Scrolling up, maybe you've noticed that we uh, do also have a related reading here coming from uh, BX Recommender. So uh, uh, with this, with this uh, demo site, we, we actually subscribe to the BX Recommender. So Primo is recommending related reading, related articles. So you're going to be finding uh, some related uh, content uh, from here. And then of course, you can access directly the article here. You can see it's suggested by the BX Recommender. Notice also that here we have a navigation uh, uh, arrow uh, at the left-hand side, or we can close this window if we, if we need be, or we can ex further explore by going to the next result, uh, looking more the details, the full details of the other records that we have uh, within our result set. Okay, let's now close this full, uh, full record display and let's go back at our explorations in here. Let me know if I'm uh, going very quick here. I'm a little bit excited and I was uh, jumping from one place to another. Okay, so uh, we talk about the citation tracking. So uh, notice here that we have uh, uh, these orange icons uh, here at the top of the brief record. So Primo provides multiple options for citation tracking. In the brief record view, uh, at the top of the record, there, there are these two orange icons. The upward arrows allows us to see articles that have cited this, while the downward arrows allows us to see citations from uh, this article. So when the minute I click on that, it will bring us at the uh, citation path that we call it. Uh, there's also an, uh, we're being provided as the, uh, a message in here saying the sort list contains items that are citing this article and note that this is not necessarily a complete list of citation. We can actually dismiss that message and then continue our uh, exploration. So let's say we find another uh, article that uh, cited by this source, we can click on that. And the more we do that, the more we're basically adding, adding up at our citation path in there. And of course, yeah, uh, notice that we have a lot of record here being uh, already available within my my uh, favorites because I've been uh, exploring the citation path. So Primo is highlighting it, telling me you have that in your favorite already. So uh, you be aware you might want to uh, uh, review because you can uh, uh, you can add it again at your citation. Notice here from this from this page you can directly bring uh, citation put citation within your favorite folder and Primo will automatically highlight that for you. Of course, you can also remove that easily and then 
uh, added to your uh, citation pad. This is really a very cool feature where, of course, you can also go back uh, to your citation if you want to review them, to say you want to review a specific citation and you want to understand why it's being linked to your citation pad, and then from there, move forward or put it in your favorite and, uh, and then review it later on. So we can go back to our search results by clicking that uh, arrow there at the left corner. Okay, so now let's try to do some uh, using our page set. So I'm going to go back to uh, resetting my my search result there, and I'm going to get to go and use once again our famous. Uh, coronavirus in here. So uh, because it's giving us a lot of results set. So first of all, uh, we can use the 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 faces in here. Uh, uh, as, I, you know, as I mentioned, the result set is based at the relevance. And go uh, scrolling down below, you can see we have availability available for us. So let's say we want to first look at the peer-reviewed uh, journals, and then we have an option to apply our filters. So we're already filtering uh, our result set. You can see and notice that it's already gone half of uh, the numbers of records in there. And notice also that Primo is providing us a active filters in here. So we have a way to also to remember uh, our filters, uh, making it persistent. So if the minute we click this icon in here, uh, Primo can have that filter persistent for us, and then we can reuse that uh, again in the next search. So uh, going down to our filters, to our presets, we can then uh, choose uh, to select resource type if need be. Uh, let's say we, we just want to look at the articles because we want to find uh, a specific article about coronavirus. So we're just going to uh, select article types in there so we can uh, narrow down our result set. And then uh, if we have a specific subject that we think applies uh, at our research, let's say, for example, we want to look at the uh, public health or the infection, so which is really very uh, important nowadays. There you go. You can see that the more we face it, our set results, the more we narrow down our, uh, our uh, research and our uh, results set in there. At the same time, uh, we can, of course, remember the filters, as I mentioned. If I click remember all the filters, notice that our filters will become persistent. So also, these filters will be available within the URL. The parameter, there will be a parameter within the URL where you can later on uh, keep this uh, at your favorites and then use that uh, for your further research. So now we're down to 4,000, which is at the, the beginning, it's around, uh, if I remember, it's like around 100, uh, 100,000 in there. So uh, the more we use our pay sets, let's say maybe uh, we, we want to only look for uh, the recent content. So let's say we want to, uh, we want to uh, use the creation date phases. So we want to only see content from 2018 to, to present. So let's refine that. And then uh, there you go. We are now in really going uh, narrowing down. And of course, then if we know the author, which is sometimes it's also, uh, uh, it's, it's a very important part of our research, but sometimes we don't really uh, have that handy. However, let's say we, we know in which, in which uh, particular journal we want to look for that content. So from here, let's say we want to uh, use, uh, look at the nature journal in order to find this specific uh, important article about the coronavirus. So now we drill down into 47 result sets. 
Again, we can remember all our filters and we can keep this uh, URL to our favorite and then keep further researching uh, using these filters. I think 47, 47 number uh, result set is uh, good to start with. Of course, here below we also have other faces. Uh, if we want to look at the new records from uh, uh, different from last month or from last week, or if we are looking for a specific language uh, result set, then we can use those facets as well. So this is how you can refine your result set. I'm going to reset now my filter. At the same time, uh, the uh, expand beyond library collection will be made available to us. So you can use that uh, filter if you are looking for something that's outside the collection, outside the collections of the library. So clicking expand, uh, expand my result beyond the library collection, basically we are accessing the, the content uh, beyond our collection. You can see, notice that we also have uh, articles in there with no access online because we are just, we are looking at everything at the index, even if we don't have full text access. Okay, so uh, let me remove that, expand beyond library collection and as you know, Primo also, uh, you can do advanced searching in Primo. So I'm just going to continue with our Corona keyword in there. And uh, let's say we want to look for coronavirus or uh, COVID-19. But I'm going to uh, put that COVID-19 between the codes and still keep my blending uh, result sets in there. Notice that Primo uh, does made a good job in here, but we have a very high number of results set. So uh, in order to narrow this down, we can uh, we can put this within we can close this within parentheses, and then let's add. Let's say uh, we want to look for. Uh, infections. So again, we're using our blended uh, search scopes in there. So now we want to, we'll be getting more content, narrowing down the content, which is a while ago, it was around 200 plus thousand. And now we're narrowing down into 43, uh, where uh, we, we can see from our result set, we're actually targeting different type of uh, content now, which is more uh, specific to what we're looking for. You can see we have infection and the study of COVID-19 in there. Let me see also because uh, if I change this into just targeting the central discovery index, which is just the uh, uh, electronic resource set, and then uh, personalize this with a specific uh, uh, discipline, let's say, because we also want to look for specific content. Uh, you know, uh, COVID and coronavirus is actually uh, a topic where also affect our health mentally. So I just want to put uh, a sort of a psychology discipline in here and see what uh, kind of results that we're going to get. Maybe uh, if I yeah, basically the discipline actually will be boosting more on specific results with uh, the use of uh, that specific discipline. So uh, in Primo, you can also use the advanced search. So you can see uh, using the Boolean operators, uh, it make it combine all these uh, fields and add the and and the or and the not uh, Boolean operators in there. You can use that uh, by doing advanced search in Primo, 
or you can also use the advanced search still focusing or selecting your search scopes in here let's say I'm just going to uh, use the university uh, scope in there and let's say for example we are we're searching for any specific uh, uh, a book from Harry Potter however uh, we we want to serve it to our uh, to, uh, to our French uh, students in here. So let's say we're just going to target a specific book in French uh, for Harry Potter. And let's see uh, if searching for that uh, within our library, what we can find. You can see here it targeted these two uh, content, French content books for, for Harry Potter within our library. You can also use uh, the advanced search, of course, for different formats. So let's say, uh, let's say we want to search for, we want to search for a content, uh, a video content. Uh, a very famous, content like uh, an Italian video recording. Let me see if I can still find it at my library. So I'll be filtering it into uh, the shooting star from San Lorenzo and uh, it's a video in Italian. And the minute I click that, your advanced searching will be targeting that specific content from within our library. So this is how you can uh, use as well the advanced searching for known item uh, records within, uh, within our library. Okay, uh, I'm now going to reset my research uh, in here. And I also want to show you that Primo uh, is also able to provide us resource recommendations. So uh, we, we have the ability to, to set tags in Primo and to recommend resources. So let's say typing a specific tag in here. Notice that I'm suggesting my users uh, databases, specific databases. At the same time, uh, I can use uh, different tags. Uh, for example, if we want to promote uh, research guide or library guides in here, we can, uh, we can do that in Primo. So uh, in here, you can see I'm promoting an architecture and urban planning uh, library guide, so uh, by using a specific tag. And at the same time, of course, if we want to uh, uh, also other, other example, like we want to, uh, to find a specific uh, suggested a specific library subject librarian. So in here, you can see we can promote that in Primo. So there are, there are many other uh, ways we can uh, surface content. Uh, this is uh, uh, examples of uh, suggesting databases and uh, subject, subject librarians or specific content. And you can also customize that into whatever content you want to uh, suggest to your users. Okay, so uh, this is basically the last part of my search demo. It's really a great uh, time with you guys today. So, thank you again and have a good day.